For the next four Breakfast Bible Bites, we need to take a side road down the road of the New Testament Gospel so that we are better able to appreciate the prophetic nature of the Gospels interwoven in the Psalms. Therefore, we will begin with the Gospel of Jesus Christ. When we have finished this rabbit trail excursion of reviewing the Gospel in the New Testament, we will again revisit Psalm 69, beginning at verse 8. But here in the New Testament, there are three passages that encapsulate the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We read in John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Christ's Spirit follows this up through Paul's pen in Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. By grace you have been saved, along with the ramifications found in Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourself, it is a gift of God. If you are reading this, then the fundamental doctrine of our human need uh, to be born again should not be something new to you. The gospel truth is that Jesus offered the propitiatory sacrifice of his perfect physical life on the cross to appease the wrath of God that stands against all sin and sinful humanity. 1 Peter 1, 18 through 25 defines the scope of our need and Christ's wrath assuaging sacrifice. We must be born again if we are to receive eternal life with Jesus Christ. For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of times for you who through him are believers in God, who raised God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. By obedience to the truth, having purified yourselves for sincere love of the brethren, love one another earnestly from a pure heart since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all, fra- all flesh is, is like grass, and its glory like, that, like the flower, like a flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you as, the, as a gospel to you. He made one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Have you been born again? Have you received the propitiation of Christ that will appease the wrath of the Father that stands against you, reconciling you to the Creator, restoring you to the state of Adam's creation? We read in Romans 10, 9 and, and 9 through 10, If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. One believes with the heart resulting in righteousness and one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. This is confirmed in John 1.12. But to all who believe in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. If all that you have ever done is reluctantly ambled forward to an altar and asked Jehovah to forgive you, but did not notice a transformation in your life, perhaps you have bought into the doctrine of demons, the easy believism taught by so many pulpits. It is a salvation without the Spirit's life-changing, nature-altering, mind-renewing guidance that changes the way that we think.